Hello everyone, welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off in Chapter 2, which is all about aerodynamics. In particular, we're going to talk about hovering. Now, before we get into it, just a little terminology. We have two kinds of hovers. We have IGE, in-ground effect hovers, and we have out-of-ground effect hovers. Now, why do we care? Well, it turns out that we have this thing called ground effect, which is a reduction in induced drag as you get close to the ground. How close to the ground? If you're within a rotor diameter of the ground, the rotor starts to become more efficient because of sort of this cushioning effect, if you will as you get near the ground. Now here's something that's very important to understand as a helicopter pilot. Uh, a lot of fixed wings pilots, I don't believe, really understand this, but ground effect is not an on and off kind of thing. It's not a binary thing. It's not like, oh, I have ground effect or I don't. Instead, ground effect is really something that increases as you get closer to the ground. And why is it important to understand that as a helicopter pilot? As a helicopter pilot, if you're trying to put the helicopter down, and if you bring the collective down to a certain level, you will get stuck in a hover. And you have to continue to drop the collective in order to make it to the ground. Because what happens is, as you get closer and closer to the ground, then the ground effect becomes more and more pronounced. And you have to continue to decrease your lift in order to, you know, get that to work out the way that you want it to, where you're actually on the ground. So it's not unusual for students to kind of get within a couple of inches of the ground and then have a really hard time getting actually on the ground because of ground effect. So because of this, most helicopters, they'll say, here's our hover ceiling in ground effect. And it depends on the weather. There'll be more about that later. And, you know, then there's an out of ground effect hover where you're higher up. And so now you cannot hover at such a high altitude because it takes a lot more power to do so. So here is what appears to be a typo in this book because here when I have the ground nearby I can hover with lower power lower pitch too and that causes the wind to go at more of an angle through the rotor which is always more efficient and it reduces my tip vortices as well. Whereas if I were out of ground effect, now the wind is going more straight through that induced flow and I have larger tip vortices. Okay, so more about hovering. If I want to hover, that can be something that sounds very simple, but is in fact pretty difficult. Right? And just like everything else, you have to maintain these four forces in equilibrium. And if you don't, you're going to move. So how does this work? There are a couple of things that you need to know about. Now, the first thing that they talk about here is translating tendency. And they say, how does this happen? Well, when I try to pick up my helicopter, I have my tail rotor. And as I increase the RPMs and I look to pick up my helicopter and I increase the power that's being delivered to the main rotor, I also increase the power delivered to the tail rotor. So the tail rotor is going to be on the left in the standard helicopter, and that's going to try to push me to the right. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can observe this in action, in actual helicopter. So let me start by doing this. Let me start by working the controls and just reminding you of how they work. So here I am pushing my cyclic to the right and you'll see how it tilts my rotor to the right, tilts it to the left, pulling back. It's tilting my swash plate there to the left or to the back and now it's tilting it forward. And if I want to affect the blades of the pitch of all the blades at the same time, I could move my collective. So if I pull my collective up, you'll see all of them drop and you'll notice that the pitch will increase. Okay, so that is the different blades. If I wanted to, I could actually pull back to the tail rotor and let me go ahead and change the pitch of my tail rotor as well by pushing the pedals. So that's pushing the right pedal. Pushing the right pedal means that I'm going to decrease my pitch and pushing the left pedal increases that pitch. So that will increase and decrease the thrust right here. Okay, so here I am in my Schweitzer and I'm gonna go ahead and try to just lift it off. Now I'm gonna do this from the perspective of being inside and I will intentionally not try to fix any kind of translating tendency, right? So how do I take off a helicopter? Well, I'm gonna start by bringing up the power a little bit. Now there are a couple of different methods for lifting off the Schweitzer. Uh, one method is you can get the RPMs into the bottom of the green range and then you can start slowly pulling up and the correlator which we talked about previously will try to get the RPMs into the green range and you might have to roll off a little bit to keep them there now personally I actually like a slightly different method I roll up the power to about 2000 and I just lock in the throttle and let the correlator do its job but you know that's not necessary I mean there's a couple of ways you can do this but what I'm going to do is I am going to not touch the cyclic I'm just going to pull this up and we'll see where it goes And notice it went to the right, kind of as expected. It's getting kind of dusty here since I just landed in the dirt. But So that's translating tendency. And what causes that? That is caused very simply by the tail rotor. So if I look at it from the outside again, tail rotor is going to produce more thrust and it's going to push the tail to the right and it's going to take the rest of the aircraft with it. That's my translating tendency. Some other factors that are going to have. Now they talk about different ways that your helicopter might be designed to minimize this translating tendency. You know, one of them is to affect how the flight controls are rigged. You can, you know, tilt the mast a little bit. And 
there are some helicopters like the Robinsons where they're like, yeah, you figure it out. And they make absolutely no correction for it. So it's up to the pilot to fix, you know, let's just say their design flaws, if you will. Also in forward flight, there are some helicopters like the Schweitzer that'll have horizontal stabilizers. So you see this fin here. There's also another fin that's kind of hard to see from this particular angle. And those will affect your forward flight. It will tend to kind of stabilize you and get you away from that. Now, the next thing they talk about is pendicular action. So what is this? A helicopter is essentially like a weight that's hung from the rotor. If you take a pendulum and you start moving it, you can get it to start swinging and it wants to continue swinging. And that's essentially pendicular action. So when I like to fly and teach people how to fly helicopters, especially, I like to say slow, smooth, small. And everything depends on everything. So you have to be very careful about what sort of control inputs you're going to give in your helicopter. And I have seen sometimes, you know, students, they get a little bit too gung ho and they start hitting those controls really hard. And you can get into this pendicular action, especially on a gusty, windy day. So let me see if I can try to kind of show you what that looks like in the helicopter. Let me go back inside. Way I always like to fly in actual conditions, so it's a pretty nice day at Mount Pocono today. But you know, many days, you know, especially when the winds get up to 45 knots, um, I like to hop in the simulator just to just to practice and something that if it crashes, I won't uh, cry too much and neither will the owner of the helicopter school. All right, so let me go ahead and try to show you what this looks like. I'm going to pick up my helicopter here. All right, and I'm going to like bring it this way and I'm bringing it back and I'm bringing it this way. And notice it's just swinging in a crazy way. I think I'm on fire now. Yeah, I just I just crashed. So that's pendicular action. So how do you avoid it? Slow, smooth, small. All right. You don't have those massive inputs and you'll be better off. Okay. So what are some other things about hovering flight? that you need to know. They talk a little bit about coning. So what's coning? Coning is how these blades will flex upward when you're trying to take off. So if I go back outside, you should be able to see this happening. So let me do that. Okay. So I've got my blades. So there's my low pitch. It can, it's very slight, but I think you can actually see it here in this simulator. It is going to slightly cone up when I pull that. They'll talk about things like gyroscopic precession. What is that all about? Well, and we'll see more of this as we progress through flight. But if you apply a force, let's say I pull back on the yoke in a standard helicopter. If I apply that force on the front of the rotor, I actually feel it 90 degrees later in the rotation. So if I, you know, haul back, on the front, I haul back on the cyclic, if you will, I'm going to feel that 
90 degrees later. So I'm essentially going to have an upward force that is felt and it's going to cause my helicopter to tilt toward the right, which doesn't seem intuitive, but that's something that happens. Okay, now something I want to close with that's actually not in this section of the aerodynamics chapter, which I honestly find very strange, is when I take off in my helicopter, what's happening? I'm going to increase my lift. I'm going to increase the power that's going to my main rotor blade. So if the main rotor blade is spinning counterclockwise as viewed from above in a standard helicopter, the helicopter will try to spin to the right or clockwise. So airplanes, if you're an airplane pilot, you will know this, have left turning tendencies and helicopters, if they're standard helicopters, have right turning tendencies. So how do we fix that? What can we do? Well, it's pretty simple. We use these guys. The anti-torque pedals. So in a standard helicopter, the helicopter off the ground, I'm increasing the torque being applied by the main rotor. So I need to counteract that by putting in pedal. If I start pulling up here, notice if I don't put in anything, it will turn to the right. So let me go ahead and I'll put it down and I'm not gonna do anything. Let me uh, change my view just a little bit. So I'm going to pull it up. As I increase collective, see I'm just starting to spin. See I'm spinning toward the right or yawing as we call that sometimes. So I'm going to gently apply left pedal. Looks like I needed to apply more than that. Actually, I think I must have. Let me change my view here a little bit. Oh yeah, see the little yellow light? That's telling me that I hit my rotor and my rotor's busted, my tail rotor. So let me real quick restart this. The right way to do a pickup. As I pick up, I'm gonna apply a little bit of left pedal. It's trying to drift to the right on me. And I'm going to say, nope, I'm not going to let it. I'm not going to let it happen. And actually in my hover, if I want to make a hovering turn when I'm nice and low, I can just use the pedals. So if I want to turn, say, to the left, I just push the left pedal, stop it, I can turn back to the right. Okay, so that's just a little bit about hovering flight, and we'll, we'll move on to other forms of flight in the next video.